Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I've been live. But what, how I pivoted live was I'm down you know, 80% of my student count, as right. most martial arts schools are. <coughs> Sadly. Um, so I pivoted to, um, I hired two of my teens, and we're th one of us in e each room with one student, one instructor, oh, for wow. a half an hour. So we're, the children are basically getting uh, $400 dollars with a lessons for 150 bucks. And you know? one on one, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and one, one on one. one. That's and one on crazy. one. And we rotate every other class, we rotate. So once every three <coughs> weeks, I get every student. So they oh, get wow. me. They get me. They get, and the two kids that I have teaching with me have been with me. They're two of my student blocks. They've been with me eight years or so. Now, so you brought up beautiful. kids and, and, and part of my research. And even when we talked with, um, Rebecca, yeah, her, her this, this program that you did with the unified school system, safe kids, safe kids. I mean, I love that idea. We, we teach a, um, a rape prevention thing in our, in our system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to hear that you took it even further well, by going to the schools when these kids like are just... 20 years? 20 yeah. years, but it's, it's born out of tragedy. Um, my, uh, my little cousin was kidnapped, and r kidnapped, raped, and murdered at eight years oh. old in 1979. And, <clears throat> and um, you know, so I've dedicated my life to the kids. Sometimes it kills me because I'd love to have some adults to work with. You know, I've got some great stuff to work, but the only adults I have are my kids that have grown up. Right. You know, and and so well, Rebecca swears up and down by you. Uh, yeah, she uh, still you. uses a lot of what, what yeah. she learned. And, and yeah, program. we we did this. Uh, did you watch the twenty fifth yeah. episode? Yeah, where she yes. got in there and beat the shit yeah, out of this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she said, "I don't even remember what I did. I don't even realize what I did." Just but flow. She exactly. just thought about it. She goes, yeah, all the stuff that stuck with her were things that were, were, were born from you. Well, you know, it, it's what she's had the most of. So right. it's what you're going to fall back on. It's what I fell back on. Yeah. Um, one of the other reasons why I do that is for the young ladies, you know, to be safe is my mother was date raped mm. 67 <clears throat> years ago. Do the math. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was supposed to be aborted. Right. Kind of hard to get an abortion in <coughs> 1954. Yeah. I was supposed to be given away for adoption. I was literally born in San Francisco at St. Elizabeth's, which is no longer there, which right. was then called a home for unwed mothers. Wow. Right? So now wow. we understand the DNA. <laughs> exactly. If I'm, doing, if I'm doing the math and, and, and all these things correctly, yeah. I'm connecting the dots, yeah. and this is you. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And look at how well you turned out. Hey, martial arts. Yeah. You know, when did that, you find that, all this out, though? Well, my mother never lied to me and, and told me that from, from an early age, you know. Um, well, and, and, you know, I, I, I won't yeah. go into specifics. No, no, I, no, I just, no, no, no. You know, I, it, it just, whatever happened, 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 happened right, you know. Right. And, and it was a long time ago, and it didn't affect me at all, you know. Um, well, I had a great upbringing. Uh, we lived on Seminary Avenue in Oakland. My mom lived in the apartment downstairs. I, my grandparents were upstairs. I were raised by my grandparents from from birth until sixty three or so, and then yeah. my grandmother passed. My grandfather bought some property out in the Central Valley, Central mm -hmm. Coast mm -hmm. Valley, and, and uh, out in the boonies. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 but so that I was stayed a good there. Thing, I think. Cowboy hat and boots. Oh, you saw that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was great. I love it. I, I go. He, he's I go my once research a year. guy, by the yeah, way. I go once a year uh, wow. because I I have to have that. It's so peaceful and it smells so great. It's just a beautiful, unknown place. Do you ever bring the students out there to say, hey, let's do No, I plan on doing a, yeah, a, ni a knife great. thing out there. But yeah. it, in the summertime, it gets like 115, <laughs> yeah. 120. Yeah. <laughs> Try in the spring. <laughs> well, here's the thing is the flora is absolutely beautiful in the oh, spring. And it has been found by naturalists. And now everybody descends on them. Oh, you know, and, and it's horrible because they... Like you said, the oversaturation. Oh, business. man. People go out there and throw out a blanket and have a picnic in the middle of the flowers. And, and leave the know. shit out there like they do. <sighs> Damn people. Humans. You know, uh, <laughs> Clinton yeah, made humans. it a monument humans. in yeah. 2000 because of the flora, endangered species. And all wow. the Indian pictographs. There's Indian pictographs, wow. painted rock. There's a holy rock there. So it's, 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 it has a fantastic history. history yeah. It's called the Carrizo Plains. Okay. Research it because it is just beautiful. And then now one of my friends' families, the Twisselmans, 
They have a great camping, like a glamping thing set up by the lake. <laughs> glamping. And I went there, and it's great. They they have a cattle ranch. They butcher their beef, and wow, and they are selling crazy. their beef, and it's really good beef. Twistleman <laughs> uh, Ranch beef, you know, and uh, shameless plug. Shameless you know, plug. Cause they're great. We might people. have to drive there after this and get some. Beef. Yeah, you know, if you ever <laughs> if you ever traveling to L.A. down Highway great. Five, right around, you well, know, just before. Yeah, it says. Yeah. Twistleman Road. Twistleman. The, yeah, the know, family's been there for generations. Yeah, I know that area. We yeah, and so they, you know, they pivoted their businesses too. The, so if I pull up there and bring up your name, will they give me free beef? <laughs> well, I don't know about free. But... <laughs> so, hey, Ron said the family me. discount. Ron, Ron, Ron said me. Ron's idea. Ron's idea. <laughs> Ron said come by. As crazy as beef's going to get in a while, might not be a bad idea to have that uh, that, that yeah. connection. So uh, anyway, okay. a I'm great place video. to go camping. Also, That's beautiful. Wow, we're gonna have to check that out. Yeah. You know, we've been running into a lot of people who are giving us all these crazy things you know we now Ian and I have decided to help the uh, small, small businesses, businesses that we can yes I saw and um, you know so we talked to those people and they're a lot of fun oh my god yeah you know, this, I want to come try that Hawaiian restaurant uh, dude oh know, my god I, I'll come out there you guys that could meet me for lunch <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, the Tocino thing mm -hmm. they use uh, he says it's thin but it's a freaking this no, thing of a pork chop after he beats it it's yeah. probably like this <laughs> thick when it starts off oh, but yeah. it beats it down to about an inch oh nice. my god the, the flavoring on it you, you wouldn't know it was a pork oh, chop yeah. it was just it amazing was so delicious yeah you gotta go well, so when you go call us we'll meet you there I will I will so, what else is going on with you as far as, you know, now that COVID is struck, you're getting up there in age. I know you, you had to stop the uh, keep safe thing with the kids. Well, actually, I did safe kids with uh, kids. on Zoom. Oh, oh you're doing I just got done in with it. The difference was we didn't have our final. Right. The final, I, I told you, was, uh, you know, set up two cones, and yeah. I get some one of my big guys, and usually we'll get some of the bigger football player seniors that oh, are in okay. PE or whatever right. we'll get them put the suit and, on yeah they don't come back because in three weeks I teach <laughs> oh no the, I'm done man. I teach these girls to be savage man they're savage <laughs> in three weeks I, I'm and, the guy that wears the pads in, in our regular yeah class, there's so. one of the helmets right there right that helmet I, right there yeah. and, and I, I didn't bring the suit in today but um you know I, I want them to know <laughs> that they could do it so yes, they've cried, they've bled. Oh yeah, they've had broken arms. Um, they've wow. fainted. I mean, it gets. It, it, uh, don't ask me how I haven't gotten in trouble over that. Yeah, but, <laughs> I was what, like, uh, where are the lawsuits? <laughs> I have no idea. I pray every. Okay. Thank you, but somehow or other, you know. And I toned it down the last couple of years. Uh -huh. So I'm down to only one high school now. I used to have several, but wow. I've had three concussions myself doing this program. So. I don't get in the wait, wait, let, Let's go know how you got those concussions. Because wearing the helmet. Wearing the helmet. Just smacking the hell out of you. These yeah, kids these, just, these girls. Well, because well, I'm sure that the, uh, what the scenario is you're dragging them, right? So they feel that adrenaline. Yes. And if you talk yes. well, God, I, I, that I, adrenaline is just hits so much harder. Boom. Yeah. Wow, wow. And now they know wow. they can escape. Right. I have six documented stories of of escape, of of. Students that came through the program, none of them my actual, one of them my actual student. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The rest were um, just the program. Just the program. The one that was my actual student is my Angie. Um, she uh, was a senior in high school, walking through the parking lot, Walmart, walking home from school. Guy grabbed her by her ponytails, pulling her back uh, into her van or a car. We don't know. She turned around and she, she literally just hammer fisted him and ran. Wow. It was just wow. that easy. <clears throat> now. I'm proud of her for escaping, but I'm more proud of her for not fighting him not because she's him. one of my fighters. Right. right. She easily could have just stood Keep up and, and, and yeah. bang with him. No, she she hit and escaped. Yeah. She now is um, a Alameda County Sheriff. She's been on the <laughs> she's been on the department for two years. That's Within awesome. a year, they already brought her into defensive tactics at the academy. So she's wow, a, she's a, detect, a, trainer a detect trainer already within a year. Wow. That's amazing. Within a year. It's amazing. And, that, and that's, that's old to you. No. She was quite a young lady. Um, yeah, but that has a lot to do with, the, you yeah. know, the, the people you run into who become your mentors and the people that you look up to, especially in the martial arts world, they are what makes you. I mean, I'm a true believer that the students are a direct reflection of their instructors. I mean, you got to agree with that, right? I mean, I hope so. I, yeah. I, I, I try I mean, to. I, I see that. I hope so. You know, yeah. I see that more times than not that yeah. that one good kid 
because of what he learned from the instructor, stays that way. Right. When they could have easily turned a different corner. When this kid came in to our school, and he was a real prick. I mean, he was a little, you know, arrogant and the whole bit. And I've had a few of those. And, and then when you security. watch him on my show, you can see. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, keep in line. I have no problem doing it too. <laughs> but with the things that we as instructors teach our students, and and the way they change the way they are because of what we taught, mm -hmm. that's a direct reflection of yes. us, isn't it? Yes, absolutely is. You know, and, and, and I and thought that I watching mean. him throughout the videos. You know? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the first one to where we are yeah. now, I mean, yeah. there's a. A little bit of a change because he started when we first started this stuff it really mainly was just for us and our students mm -hmm. and Dennis uh, our good friend Dennis Duarte um, saw that and said hey you know you really should branch out and talk to other people and you know this is great that you guys just have a natural conversation there's nothing set up and and it's fun to hear mm -hmm. but aside from that there's a lot of good little nuggets as Dennis would say about the conversations that we have mm -hmm. with people the things that you're bringing up with your girls and, and, and these kids who have become what they've become, mm -hmm. uh, and and credit to you for um, for Rebecca. Right. I mean, you know, she doesn't become that without your stuff. Right. Yeah. Oh, and before we stray too far from from the topic, uh, I just want to point out that you you made your mother and your cousin proud. Yeah, uh, thank I, you. I, I, thank by, you. By, by the thank work you. that you've done with these kids, because that, that that's important to us. Yeah. I have daughters myself, and and. It's a topic that a lot of people don't discuss, and because we don't discuss it, there's not enough for people to fall back on. So I'll, t I'll tell you something about his daughters, right? He has a six-year-old? Uh, seven now. Seven now? And, and the other one's like 11, right? So I was, I was talking to the 11-year-old. To the I said, hey, uh, so what are you guys going to do if, if you guys get kidnapped? Because we're leaving them in the car to go get some food. He says, well, that's okay. She's a biter and I'm a scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> that being said, yeah. more importantly, I teach my young men how to treat a lady and what and how, how they should be. And I, that's, that's the other half of the battle. Yes, right. That's yes. the other half of the Absolutely. battle. Absolutely. You know, and... Um, Another thing that people don't talk about too much. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of a lot of men, and I've seen with their kids, you know, they always want to teach them to be assholes. And, oh, you got to fight. You got to do this. You're a guy. You know, you're yeah, a guy. you're a guy. You shouldn't be doing it, you know. And, and, and to hear you say that's refreshing. That's different. It really is. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, I'm to starting to like you now. <laughs> 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 Before, ah, whatever. <laughs> it's only wrong. <laughs> He made his way so Just long. Just wrong. My friends call me Ronnie. <laughs> oh, we can, we're not friends yet. We're not no, friends. you can't. No, we're working our way. We'll, we'll get there. Now, you yanked this out, and, I, and I've been staring at this all this time. He goes, it's wicked, man. Is this like a, to check your oil or what the hell? Is that? <laughs> Stick an arm out. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh, my God. That's but, cable wire, But bro. more importantly. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's a it's a window shatter, right. just right. in case, do -do -do -do. and I can check my oil. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's like, it's an all-purpose tool. Yeah, I was like, what the hell is that? Like, and there's a pocket clip on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is a pocket clip. <laughs> this is scary, dude. Oh, multi-purpose tool. It's like, God. Wait, what did your wife say that was for? <laughs> <laughs> well... I have a Filipino wife, so, you know, <laughs> you tell me, man. <laughs> oh, Filipino Portuguese, man. There you go. Tell. Oh, that's wow. even worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, man. she's, we've been married 30, almost, I think we're going to be 33 years this year. Oh, together. Good. What's her name? Give her a plug, come on. Karen. Karen. Karen, huh? Karen. my wife Karen, man, she's, she comes from a martial art family. Oh, wow. Uh, her father was uh, Ralph Castro's first senior student. Wow. His that... first brown belt. Uh, didn't get to black belt because family had six kids, so, you know, yeah. living over here, and and so Ralph did give him his black belt later on in life, you know. But oh, that's cool. but that was so. Well, Ralph uh, has always been that and, way. And Ralph is very. July generous. was my father in law's uh, goddaughter, you know, and so yeah, we had close ties to Uncle Ralph and Uncle Ralph, yeah, and Uncle Ralph. Auntie Dude, Pat, he yeah. he was like so respected in the martial arts. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, when he passed away, I mean, everybody went. You know, yeah, I yeah. mean. Everybody went to a pair of specs. And, and I remember because I, I, I was in that, during that era when he mm. would have the best tournaments. Mm. You yeah. I mean, oh, he yeah. was all no, over I, the Bay Area. Yeah, I, 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 the picture you see of uh, I'm, my last picture, when I tore down my dojo, mm -hmm. I'm not a, a trophy guy. <laughs> okay. 
I, I, I had them all in a storage space. I was paying, <laughs> paying X amount. And I said, screw it. I, I can't pay that anymore. So I put them all above my bathroom. Okay. <clears throat> and then when that closed down, now they're in my garage. But Somewhere. Yeah. I, I took one picture with all my trophies, and it's, it's on the picture yeah. thing. But one of them there is, is some from, I think, from a couple of them yeah. from Ralph. Yeah. Wow. He, um, he was, like I say, he was really well. Because he would put on the best tournaments. You yep. knew that they were always going to be legit. Yep. You know, because remember competition. some of the other ones were... Or not so much. Yeah, I mean, I remember who, who, some of those. Yeah. I mean, I was getting, you know, East West Dragons, right? Crazy Dragons. Oh. <laughs> a, see, uh, we get the same remark from him. Well, no, no, I've, I've, I've known, you know, known him forever. They're... But they were like the Cobra Kai's of the day. Really good fighters. Oh, yes. Really good fighters. Yeah, yeah. Satch, Satch Williams, my, my brother, was one, of, was one of the best <laughs> in the nation. Yeah. And, you know, I've stood, were... I've stood on the other side of that line from him. <laughs> And and I, I, do you know who Satch was? Yes, of you course. know Satch. Yeah. Yes, I, I've, I've you know I judge a lot of who who did I stand on the other side of that line yeah, from because right. I would do forms and fight. Right. right. You know, I didn't just do one or the other. Uh, I would I would always try and do yeah. both. How are your forms today? I have no hips, so they're <laughs> they're they're horrible. I've always hated cut them. Um, you know. <laughs> I hate them, but if it wasn't for yeah. the forms, I I may I would have had anything to teach on Zoom. Right. I, uh, I, I feel sorry for the for the for the studios that don't have that access to that curriculum. What 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 can you do for a month or two? But for a year, yeah. right? You know, um, right. my 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 purple belt students all now have almost all the black belt material. <laughs> they don't do it like a black belt, right? But but they have the material to now build on. Right, because you know? that's one thing that that I came across that that I really liked. You said I don't like them, but I know them and I teach them. Yes. Why is that? There's a lot of hidden gems in them. Yeah. There's a lot. A, there's a lot of good self defense tech, and I was blessed <laughs> to have a teacher, Grand, uh, Grandmaster uh, James Juarez, that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that worked those drills as cardio, as self defense, uh, as the forms. We took the bunkai uh -huh. out of it and worked it, but he would take sections of it and just drill the heck now, out of for, it. For the audience that doesn't know, what's bunkai? Bunkai is the application of your forms. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we always hit these words that you guys spout out. <laughs> <and be> like, <laughs> what's he talking about? Yeah. And Kaju so Kimball, man, we have yeah, Chinese, remember, we're Japanese, on Korean. I mean, we're, I mean, we're, we're talking about a hodgepodge. Of a, we're a hodgepodge. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because you know, <laughs> even, even in Filipino martial arts, we have like... Five different names from one thing. And yeah. It was like, what is that? Oh, that's depending this. on the region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, depending on where you're from, it's like, oh, yeah. what's up, Anika? Oh, that's called. A, I'm like, uh, Anika. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's kind of why I, 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 I've spent my my life trying to. It wasn't so much I was going out learning di different things. Right. Mm -hmm. I kept to my kaju ken and bow. Right. So and we I, see I that. so I have yeah. rank in taekwondo. I have rank in jujitsu. My kempo is covered. My my. Who did you do kempo with? Um, that, that's our Kaju Kembo. Yeah. But uh, but Bruce Strutnik and 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 the the gathering. I met you at the gathering. Yeah. Do you remember that? A long time ago, Dennis introduced us. It was uh, just we were out in yeah, the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So said, no, I did meet but you and your yes, brother. Yes. yes just yeah. just for a bit. They they had brought me. That's in. why I knew what you looked like. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's funny, you know, because we're we're talking about all these things. I I studied under uh, Beliso mm -hmm. from San Francisco. I don't mm -hmm. know if you. Yes, remember. of course I do. And. Um, they had a garage thing, you know. I mm -hmm. mean, if you, it was their house, mm -hmm. and downstairs the garage, and, and they put up a floor, and the ceilings were so low that you literally could almost bump your head when you're doing shit. Um, but that was the heyday of martial arts. Yes, you know, back in the '70s. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's when martial arts was. You didn't have the McDojos like like so you would before the McDojos. East West. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, this is before the McDojo stuff. I mean, everybody, you know. You, you didn't mind getting hurt for real. Mm -hmm. there, nobody was really holding back anything. You did what you did. Mm -hmm. I mean, you knew that I'm here to learn how to fight. Mm -hmm. That's why there weren't a lot of people, but, you know. Quality people. Yeah, but in most schools, I, I think the average student thing was probably about 30 to 40 people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's Still huge a lot, for yeah. a martial arts school, you know, but they all had small places. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah. I mean, all of the, the schools... We're One room like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been always my business model since I since I started. I never I I, I have always had a floor just about this size. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, because I never wanted to pay more than twelve hundred dollars a month for rent. 
<laughs> no, serious. The economics plays a big game. <laughs> that, right? And that'd be more part of it. Well, yeah. that's what yeah. all... Think about the years of this <laughs> yeah. like this. Now, well, that's what I'm saying. When we I was at the had boys' small club, schools. I mean, I taught for free at the boys' club for from '84 to '99. Oh, wow. Yeah, free five bucks, maybe twenty bucks. You know, yeah, I think yeah, I, yeah. at the end there was like twenty bucks, but basically free. But I never had more than 20, 25 students. Yeah, that was right? the, yeah. But when I moved into my first, you know, school, which was just about this size, I, I, I outgrew that very quickly. And mm -hmm. within a year, a year and a half, I moved into our San Leandro, our present location in San Leandro, because right. I have my school in the manor in San Leandro. I gave that to my son a couple of years ago as a wedding mm -hmm. present, and he, he runs oh, that wow. school That's now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You That's know. a hell of a wedding present. <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. I mean, I was concentrating on this, and we were going back and forth. And I go, you know what? This is yours, baby. You're a married man now. You're you have to etch yeah, out. Man. No, no, it's just you have to etch out your own living. And that's good. And, he, and I'm so proud of him because he really has done a was has done a great job, and and uh, was doing better than ever I was over there. So wow. I'm proud of him. Yeah, and he's got good competition. You know, Jordan's there, and you know, there's a couple right. other places yeah. there. And yeah. and you know, he's he's. Did a great I, job. I'm very I proud like of him. I like your uh, school uh, thing there. I like yeah. my logo. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom into that later on. But, okay. Um, who designed that? Because that's pretty cool. I mean, that's saying me, a lot of things, me, there, isn't it? Yeah, I designed that. Uh, it, break it down for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's our our Kaju Kimbo emblem in here. Uh huh. We got the Hawaiian shark teeth, and then Kaju Kimbo MMA dons on Ru Jiu Jitsu Hawaiian style. Because everything we do is local style. Hey, yeah. you, um, you you talk about the Hawaiian style, and, mm. and, and this is this is the first time you talked about it. And that heritage from back in the day of the five. Ah, I was oh, going to hit you on that. There is six. Yeah. See, I told you there is six but because it seldom. Uh, no, there's we six. In. There are six. There are six. Hearing. One of the I know. I, I was going to correct you on that. Okay. And and because I'm a I'm a historian. And I've been ah, there, right. I've been there for well, a while. Good. Well then, John Leoning came very early down in L.A. Mm -hmm. John Leoning was one of the monks in um, in uh, the Kung Fu series. He <laughs> played he played one of the monks. Right. So John Leoning, it, it, along with Tony Ramos, was probably two of the first. Matter of fact, I think Tony was down there with him. Right. I know they were so. So they, he's often forgotten, but uh, there are six. Yeah, because we, 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 we talked with uh, Dave Amacucci. Mm -hmm. That name still cracks me up. Hey, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was, you know, because he does Tony, Tony Ramos' stuff. Yeah. And he never brought up. Um, well, it, 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 it's, it's often forgotten. Hmm. It's often forgotten. What do you think that is? Why? why? Well, because he was in, down south and everybody else ended up north. So everybody just, everybody just, just took for yeah. granted that it was just only five. Yeah, right. yeah, right, right. and 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 that 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 lineage runs deep. Connie Francis, mm. Wild Wild West. Wow. They all trained over there with him. Oh wow. Yeah. But I still have never even heard of him though. This is amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> then you, you, then you should talk to Rick Kinji mm -hmm. down down south, or more more specifically, uh, Carlos Bunda. Is really if you can talk to him, that's that's a, that's when you really want to talk to him. Directly at you. Yeah, and if you go down there and talk to him, I take a road trip with you guys. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll right. let you know once we can start traveling. And we yeah. we actually yeah. have um, several people down there that we wanted to talk to, but then because of this COVID stuff, you'd be one a night, huh? For yeah. like five nights, we also get them all well, done. Well, that, right? that's the thing we we intended to. Yeah, we go had, down there. We were and supposed do to go there today, three. as a matter of fact. <laughs> and they yeah. said, uh, yeah, you can't go because then if you come back. You're quarantined for ten days, and my work won't let me. Get yeah, right. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, sure. so uh, listen, we're 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 coming up to near no, an hour. No, no, <laughs> we're gonna come back and. No. Dude, all right, forget the goddamn hour. <laughs> Cut this one off, and then we'll do another. <laughs> no, we're not even coming. We're just gonna we're let it run. Keep going. Scratch Wait, the one, surface. This is new, uh, This is this is part of the course because we we try to stick to an hour, but then we never do. It never <laughs> happens. <laughs> even our even our goddamn restaurant thing was supposed to be like. 20 minutes, 20 minutes max. Yeah. We had a guy, we had him on for an hour. It's like, we were talking food and crap for an hour. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. So let, let, me, let me ask you this, oh, because I read, or we were, we were reading that, you did think that martial arts was doing that because, and it was like you said, MMA kind of helped and killed it. Yeah. yeah. Now, how do we bring it back? Ooh. In this present 
day. I'm not sure how we can because we can't really even get together. Um, Zoom is a great medium because I'm now able to train students that are no longer around me and with mm -hmm. me, but now I can still train with them. You can bring them back. That it's way. not the same, and especially not for Kaju, because yeah. how do you... When you have, there's you no know, physicality. Because Kaju's not a style, it's a mindset. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my little mantra. Right. Kaju Kembo is not a style, it's a mindset. And it's all about the intensity, the intent. Right. Uh, one of the quotes from, from my teacher, Jim Morez, hit with bad intentions. Right. Hmm. I like that. Oh. Me too. Yeah. Me By too. Way, let, let me do this real quick. Um, no, I'm an old man, and, and I have broken... You're, you're I'm not going to get hurt as much. Bro, I'll so. go slow. <laughs> you'll get the idea. I don't think you'll... Do you have any holy water? I'll sprinkle some water. I've been in this, in this, in this room. I know. He's, I've been watching.